Hey, 
सूर्य भ्रम आनंदी हरे हरि बोल सूर्य प्रभु पाल की हरे कृष्ण महामंत्र की जय ओम ज्ञान तिमिरं दस्य गिना जना सवकाय चक्षु उन्मलितं येना तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोविस्तम स्थापितम येन भूतवे स्वयं रूपा कदम मयं ददाति स्वां पदांतिकम Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivaranta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Sarasvati Deve Ghodavani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubhishya Griva Sindhu Pyevacha Paditanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nittananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasati Gaur Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Shila Prabhu Bhanki. Hare Krishna, so we were giving, well, we were asked, kind of asked, but also decided to speak on Ekadasi, and today is Ekadasi. Um, the word is very easy, it means 11, Eka means 1, and Dasi means 10, so Ekadasi, Ekadasi means 11. 11 days before the full moon, 11 days after the full moon, so... And each month there are two ekadasis. And ekadasi is, uh, there's an interesting story about the inception or the birth of ekadasi as it goes back to the beginning of creation. It's uh, quite an interesting story. Um, there, during the beginning of creation, there each time the material energy is re recreated, or the material, not energy, I'm sorry, material world, <laughs> is recreated, uh, Lord Brahma comes and does the work of putting the, uh, taking the ingredients that Krishna gives him, earth, water, fire, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego, ether, and puts them all together and makes the different bodies of the living entities. So, in fact, the whole material world is a combination of these eight elements, and that's all there is. What we see around us is that us, the human society, we take these eight elements and we make buildings, we make houses, we make, we make electronic devices. It's all a combination of these uh, eight elements, five actually gross elements and three uh, subtle elements. So that's the whole essence of the material existence, it's a combination of that. You're all, each of our bodies are simply a combination of these uh, eight elements in different proportions. Now, during the, the creation, there is also the principles of religion are given to Lord Brahma, who creates ten sons, and those ten sons are the propagators of religious principles, headed by Sri Narada Muni, who was the foremost of all the sons of Brahma, and the greatest of all of uh, teachers of religious principles. Now, along with a religion, there is irreligion is also created. <laughs> that those who don't want to follow the rules and regulations given by the Lord, those who want to act separately from the Lord, those who want to actually act not only separately, but actually what we call it sinfully, there are different kinds of sins that are listed in the scriptures that are some of the major forms of sinful activities. And there are many, uh, you know, such as killing animals, uh, having illicit sex with someone else's wife. All this, these are some of the more sinful activities committed by the living entities. Now, in order for this to you know, be established within society. Um, so the Lord actually established that. But then he thought, well, for these living entities who commit sinful activities, they have to be punished, obviously. 
they don't follow the laws of God, they have to follow the, law, the laws of punishment. And so he creates a person called Yamaraj. He's known as the Lord of Death. But he's also the punisher or the equalizer. Those who are sinful by nature, are they go to Yamaraj after they leave their body. And according to the volumes of sins and the types of sins they have, they get a particular hellish condition and they suffer in that hellish condition for a certain period of time, depending on the type of sins. And then after that, they get another body and they come back into the material world again to try again. So this Yamaraj has a place in the lower planetary systems, but he is actually one of the foremost of all the devas, demigods, although he resides in the lower regions. Uh, one day, or what you might say one time within history, Lord Vishnu came to see Yamaraj. And when he came to see Yamaraj, Yamaraj welcomed him nicely, he offered him uh, the throne to sit on, washed his feet, and glorified the Lord in so many worries. But then while the Lord was there, he heard all these cryings coming from a distance. And uh, he's hearing these pitiful sounds of people in, in a crying condition. So the Lord is wondering, what is that? And Yamaraj tells them, well, that's the sinful living entities. They're, they're undergoing their punishment. So the Lord starts to feel compassion for the suffering of these persons. So he goes to the more southern regions of the area and finds that all these persons are there. When they see the Lord, they immediately offer prayers to the Lord and pray to the Lord to please relieve their suffering. The Lord's heart becomes touched by their prayers and by the, the sufferings that they're undergoing. So the Lord is thinking, what can I do to somehow give a chance for those who commit sinful activities to get relieved from those sinful activities? So the Lord decided to create a particular day. It's called Ikadasi. <laughs> So when he created a codice, that means that all the sinful living entities, if they simply follow a codice, they can be freed from the results of their sinful activities. And we'll explain what that following is. So a codice became the virtue where anyone and everyone who follows the codice can give relief from the results of their sinful activities simply by following this a codice austerity. So now, um, the personification of sin, who was also created in order to bring the sin into the world, his name was Papa Purush. <laughs> Papa, in Sanskrit, means Papa means sin. Doesn't mean father. <laughs> it means sin. Pap, because sometimes you hear the word pop. Pop in Sanskrit means sinful. So Papa Purush, he is the personification of sinful activity. His whole body is made from the results of sinful activity. Each of the limbs of his body, the organs of his body are formed in a certain way to represent a certain type of sinful activity that the living entity may commit. So now Papa Purush is out of a job. <laughs> so now he's concerned. He, run, he comes to Lord Vishnu. And he says, my dear Lord Vishnu, you've created me, but now I can't do anything. <laughs> you've created this ecodicy, and now ecodicy is destroying all my work. <laughs> so how will these living entities get punished if you create ecodicy? So the Lord thought, hmm. And Papa Ruparush, he's not just saying this, he's crying. He said, I'm your devotee author. <laughs> You created me to do this work, and so you have to give me protection and some kind of facility to function. And so the Lord thought, oh, I have to do something. So he decided, all right, that on the codice, anybody who eats grains on that day will get all the sinful reactions of, hmm, if I can remember the exact understanding. In other words, they will get volumes of their sinful actions back 
In other words, this, this day is situated in such a way that anyone who eats grains on Ekadasi gets the results of sinful activity. Anybody who offers grains on this day gets more of that sinful activity. So this day has a particular restriction within it and that no one can eat any grains. And we also add legumes, beans, on this day also. So, but what does it mean to actually follow the Ekadasi Vrata? It's interesting. Because Bhakti Vinod Thakur really glorifies the Kadasi in many of his writings. And he says, Kadasi is the mother of devotion. So when we use the word mother, we, use, we mean the best of all devotion. So in that way, Kadasi is considered to be the supreme time within the month where one can worship the Lord in such a way that the spiritual benefits that one performs normally during the month is multiplied unlimitedly during the Kadasi. <laughs> so this day has great spiritual merit, tremendous spiritual merit. And so it's described that one can follow a Kadasi. Now the actual inception or the actual origin of a Kadasi in terms of the Vrata is one fasts completely from all food all water for 24 hours. In other words, each codice is near gel. Near means not, and gel means water. So a codice really means near gel. That's, but Srila Prabhupada, in bringing the Krishna conscious movement into the Western society, knew that the Westerners could not do it. <laughs> They're too much accustomed to what we say sense gratification being brought up in that atmosphere. And so he gave some concessions. But the scriptures also talk about a type of concessionary type of process where one can follow. But what does ekadasi really mean? It means to chant 24 hours a day the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. That's, what, that's the actual ekadasi. Is to from Ekadasi begins on sunrise of the day. In other words, it doesn't start from the midnight of the day. It starts on the sunrise. And it goes to the sunrise of the following day. And so for those 24 hours, a person is meant to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. <laughs> and of course, when you don't eat, you don't get tired, so you can stay up all night. It's easy. <laughs> when you eat, that's what makes you tired. Because <laughs> you have to digest, and digestion takes energy. So that's the actual ekadasi. No food, no water, chanting for 24 hours. But then again, there are mentions within the Shastras, which have come later, there are five ways one can uh, honor Ekadasi. And that is, the highest and best and most, what we say, uh, powerful, is to follow that 24 hours, simply no water, and chant, 20, and chant the whole time. A uh, little bit less than that is to take water only. And a little higher than that, a little less than that is to take food that is not cooked on a kadasi. In other words, raw food. So that's three. Higher than that is to take only cooked food aside from grains and beans like that. But I think there's only four. Uh, somebody was telling me there's five, but I can only think of four levels of practice. But by following the Akadasi, even by what Srila Prabhupada has given us, no grains and no beans like that, um, we can make great spiritual advancement on this day. Because simply by following the fast and increasing, uh, in discussions with the devotees and Srila Prabhupada, he talks about Akadasi. And he said, of course, he said, uh, chant 24 hours. But then the devotee said, well, Prabhupada, we got a lot of service to do. And Prabhupada said, all right, I chant at least 25 rounds on the courtesy. And I take a little milk, take a little fruit. Yeah. You can do that. That's actually, yeah, that's the actually other, the other one. Is no water, then water, fruit and milk, or milk products, and then raw foods, and then cooked foods, and then that's it. These are the five levels you can follow. 
So in our temples, because devotees are not accustomed to so much austerity and Prabhupada has given a lot of leniency in that, and along with the fact that we don't stop our regular activities of devotional service, and so devotees need some type of prasadam in order to carry on, uh, Prabhupada has given at least the temples of, you know, free themselves from this part, no beans and no grains. So if, now sometimes people ask, what happens if you break an akadasi? Well, if you break an akadasi, then if at the time you break the akadasi, just like say maybe some of you have not known about akadasi or not followed it today, then from that time you, you know, you follow the akadasi for the rest of that day, and the following day you also do the akadasi. So, the next day. Like there have been many incidents in our society where sometimes the cooks are not even aware of a codice and they put some peas in the subji. <laughs> it happens. Or, or something that shouldn't be there. And so then when Prabhupada heard that one time, he, be, he became like Harani Kashipu. And then he calmed down immediately and said, all right, everyone follow tomorrow. <laughs> now, also, if one doesn't follow the Akadasi, there's another concession. But you still, you have to follow the Akadasi. It's not like the concessionary principles are there in order for you to break the Akadasi. Because concessions don't work if things are done voluntarily. So if somehow by accident one does wasn't doesn't follow the ecodicy, then there is a one ecodicy that comes up in June every year. It's called Bhima Nirjal Ecodicy. And on that day one has to f completely fast from all food, including water, on that day. And then any time or if there had been any breaking of the ecodicy throughout the year. The reactions for breaking the ecodicy is nullified by following bhima near jal ecodicy. It's called bhima because it's named after the Pandava bhima, the great powerful fighter, the, the, the brother of Arjuna, who he is. He has a second name. He's called Vikradar. Vikradar means one who has a belly like a wolf. That means he has such a high fire that if he fasts, he burns up. <laughs> he has to put something into his stomach. <laughs> so on that day, so Bhima cannot follow Ekadasi, so Krishna says, all right, you do it once a year. <laughs> and that day is also given to us as an opportunity to overcome any, uh, what we say, mistakes in practicing the Ekadasi. So this is a very auspicious day like that, so one who follows the Dekadasi. And the idea is to chant more and more and more, because the chanting on this day has great, tremendous, has more spiritual effect, more spiritual merit on this particular day. So devotees usually take vows. I know devotees who chant 32 rounds, some chant 64 rounds on this day, and some devotees chant 192 rounds on this day. So, those are the Russian devotees. <laughs> they love austerities. <laughs> the 192 rounds is what Srila Haridas Thakur used to do every day. <laughs> so, this, there's some devotees who do that 192 rounds on this day. That means you don't do anything else, <laughs> you just chant. So, you might think, whoo, wow, that's hard. But no. Chanting works in such a way is that the more you chant, the sweeter it gets. So when you're chanting, like we used to do these uh, kirtan melas organized by His Holiness Sachinandana Maharaj. He started first his japa sessions and then he did kirtan melas. But in his japa sessions, he started to export them all around the world. So I remember we did one in America in 2008 where... We were chanting every day 32 rounds, and for two days out of a week, we were there for a whole week, or actually five days, we chanted 64 rounds on those two days. 
And every devotee would testify, because we would all come together at the end of the evening and give a testimony of our experience of chanting. And every devotee would testify that, yeah, at a certain time in my japa, and maybe on my 25th round or my 40th round or my 63rd round, <laughs> at some time, <laughs> if it happens on your 63rd round, then you keep going beyond 64. <laughs> There was one devotee did 128 rounds that day, I remember. So the experience is that um, at a certain time, there is a breakthrough. The breakthrough means the sweetness of the holy name starts to manifest, and one starts to just chant, 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 chant. One start lo loses the track of time or even sometimes the numbers. So it's not hard to... It's, it's hard to chant 16 rounds, but it's not hard to chant 32 rounds. <laughs> and it's easier to chant 64 rounds. <laughs> because the more you chant, the, the sweeter it gets, and the sweeter it gets, the more you want to chant. So. so this day is also, along with the austerity of the fasting, is meant for increased amounts of japa, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, like that. So this day is very fortunate. This is a day that many devotees look forward to each month. Jai Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there's one story in the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, wherein it was the Akadasi day, and of course, the, the deities don't fast on the codice. <laughs> Sometimes people think, well, God should have a codice too, but <laughs> no, he doesn't have any sinful reactions. <laughs> so one day when Lord Chaitanya was a very young, young boy, he said to his mother, please go to the house of Jagadish and Harani Garbo, and well, was not Jagadish and Haranya, and uh, please bring the prashadam that they have cooked for their Vishnu deity. <laughs> now, Sachi Matam was thinking, how does he know that? <laughs> anyway, she thought, and then she inquired, and she found out, yes, they had cooked this really big feast for their Vishnu deities on that day. And Lord Chaitanya wanted to take the prasadam of that because they had cooked so nicely. And so, of course, Lord Chaitanya is also Vishwambar, another name which means that he can consume the whole universe. <laughs> he is not limited to any amounts of food that we give him. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was here, many times some of his Special devotees, especially Damianti and her brother, her brother Raghava Pandit. Damianti used to be a really amazing expert cook, and she used to create so many new recipes. So her and her brother would would uh, make so many nice uh, preparations, and they would give it to the servants of Lord Chaitanya Govinda. And Govinda would take it to Lord Chaitanya. But sometimes Lord Chaitanya would say, I just put it over there, or put it in the next room. So, uh, and then again, people would cook, and he would say, yeah, put it in the next room. So one time Govinda came, and he, Govinda was a little bit of, he was in a little anxiety, and the Lord asked him, What's wrong? What are you? What, well, you can see you're not right. He said, "Yes, I don't know what to do. All the devotees who are cooking for you, they're asking that he like my prasadam, and I don't know what to tell them because you're not eating." <laughs> so Lord Chaitanya said, "All right, bring it all." <laughs> so he, there was a whole room full of you know prasadam that he had stored there. So Lord Chaitanya ate the whole room. <laughs> He didn't want to be favored to some devotees and leave some, so he ate the whole room. And uh, and then, uh, of course, Govinda was happy and gave the report. There was one devotee, his name was Ramachandra Puri. 
Yeah, Ranbachandra Puri. He was a disciple of Madhavendra Puri, who was the who had a disciple named Ishwar Puri, who was the godbrother of Lord Chaitanya. I'm sorry, the guru of Lord Chaitanya. So Ramachandra Puri and Ishwari Puri were godbrothers, and Ishwari Puri became the guru of Lord Chaitanya, because Lord Chaitanya, in the mood of a devotee, wants to follow the principles that devotees follow, so he took, an, he took initiation from a spiritual master. And his, his Param guru was Madhavendra Puri. So Ramachandra Puri was a critic. <laughs> he was a critic. One time, his his guru, Madhavendra Puri, was in uh, he was in ecstasy, and he was crying out for Krishna. And we understand that the great souls they feel so much what you say natural humility in their ecstasy of love of God that they feel that they're worthless, and they express that in their prayers. So he was reciting beautiful prayers and crying out to Krishna. And Ramachandra Puri was there. And he said to his guru, you know, just be peaceful and meditate on Brahman. Ramachandra uh, uh, Puri, he looked at his disciple and he said, get out of here. If I see your face when I die, I don't know what my destination will be. <laughs> and so he, he displeased his spiritual master by speaking, not only instructing his spiritual master, which is an offense in itself, but he also instructed in the wrong way. And so he lost the mercy of his spiritual master. When you lose the mercy of your spiritual master, then it's just a matter of time when you go back to material life again. So he lost the complete mercy. And then, so then, he used to come and he had a habit of wanting to feed the devotees of Lord Chaitanya. So what he would do is that when they would have a feast, he would make sure he would serve. So he would go and associate with the devotees of Lord Chaitanya and serve out the feast. And then he would say, take more, take more. And he would encourage him to take more. And after they took more, he would say, just see. Lord Chaitanya's devotees, they eat too much. <laughs> he would force them to take more, and then he would say, look, they eat too much. So the devotees didn't really like his association so much. <laughs> and so at one time, he came into the room where Lord Chaitanya was staying, and he saw all ants on the floor. And so he was thinking, oh, this sannyasi, he's not a real sannyasi. He's sneaking, eating sweets at night when nobody's around. And therefore, this proves it because there are all these ants here. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so the word got back to Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> and then he said also, Lord Chaitanya, he's a sannyasi and he eats too much. <laughs> he eats too much. <laughs> so, and his devotees are also the same. Prabhupada said, you know, the devotees of Lord Chaitanya, they like prasad. <laughs> but they also like to serve and like to have kirtan. So, uh, the Lord Chaitanya, when he found out Ramachandra Puri was criticizing, he, he said he cut his eating in half. And therefore, the devotees became uh, really unhappy because now they were cooking for him and he wasn't eating. Because he was only eating a little bit because Ramachandra Puri cut him. So he became a little bit uh, a nuisance to the devotees. So one day, just out of nowhere, Ramachandra Puri left Navadweep. And he never came back. And all the devotees were happy. <laughs> and then Lord Chaitanya resumed his eating habits again. <laughs> So, yeah, this is a nice example. Now, this is an example of when you lose the mercy of your spiritual master, you instruct your spiritual master, you criticize your spiritual master, you find fault with the spiritual master, and then the mercy is gone, and then when the mercy is gone, 
you're also God. And there was another disciple, that was Ishwar Puri. Ishwar Puri served his spiritual master so nicely that when his spiritual master was in an invalid condition and he could not even take care of his own bodily needs, Ishwar Puri was doing the medial service of taking care of all his bodily needs when he was practically unable to walk. And because he did that, he served his spiritual master so nicely, he got the special blessings of his spiritual master, so much so that he became the guru of Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> so Lord Chaitanya wanted to show the world, or Madhavendra Puri actually showed the world that this is the relationship with the guru, that one who serves the guru and pleases the guru, there's no limit to the spiritual merits and benefits that that, spirit, that person gets, and one who displeases, shrama eva he gave a club, which means everything they do becomes useless, like that. So, uh, just wanted to make that story because Lord Chaitanya doesn't follow ecodicy. <laughs> when we were in New Vrindavan, when I was there in my beginning days, we would have, uh, we had a deity of Srila Prabhupada on the altar, we had deities of Gornitai, we had deities of Radha Krishna, we had deities of Jagannath Baladeva and Subhadra Maharani. So Prabhupada, each of the deities had their own separate plates. So we had um, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda each had, each had a plate. Uh, Radha and Krishna had one plate, I believe, and Jagannath Baladeva Subhadra, no, they, no, everybody had their own individual plates, that's right. So there was three, four, five, six, seven plates for the deities, and then Prabhupada was there, and he had his plate too, on the altar, along with him on the Vyasasan. So when we would cook for, for the deities and offer it, all this, these seven plates would have regular prashadam and akadasi except Prabhupada. Prabhupada would have the Akadasi plate on the altar like that. It became quite confusing for the Pujaris after a while, <laughs> trying to sort everything out, but they did it. And that was the way how we were trained during the Akadasi like that. So, uh, yeah. All right, so any questions, comments about that? Ecodicy or anything related, or just questions in general. <laughs> yes, what is your name again? Hmm? Marseille. 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 Marcel. 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 Okay. Yes. Thank you. They want to give you a microphone so people online can hear also. Could I just ask? Um, I saw in the calendar that each Ekadashi has its own name. So, for example, um, Bhima Ekadashi and um, others. Could I just ask of, for the importance of these names and of knowing the stories connected with them? Well, there's a whole book called Ekadashi which kind of narrates each of the stories that are connected with that particular Ekadashi. Um, I no, don't know the details. I have the book myself. It's called Ecodicy. <laughs> <laughs> It's a red cover. <laughs> and there have been other books that have been published after that about ecodicy, uh, as far as some of the restrictions to follow. So, um, yeah. Um, I mean, there's one, one you can't take uh, sesame seeds on ecodicy either. They're not allowed, except for one ecodicy, which is called Satyu ecodicy, and that's in usually in January. Uh, T 
Teal means sesame, T-I-L. And so on that codice, you can take sesame seeds. So there's a little concession for that. But the rest of the codice mean no sesame seeds like that. And some devotees follow very strictly where there's no seeds or no uh, roots on the codice. And some devotees take only vegetables that are grown above ground and not underground. Like underground vegetables are, are what, carrots, potatoes, right? Like that. But we're the International Society for Cooking and Eating Potatoes. <laughs> We have a, somebody's going to someday create a potato cookbook, <laughs> just, just potatoes. <laughs> you probably know why that, you know how that happened? Prabhupada said, potatoes, king of vegetable. So he made that statement after that. <laughs> you have to have potatoes every day, and if you can have them three times a day, then you're more Krishna conscious. <laughs> So, <laughs> anyway, we, we like potato chips. <laughs> so, yeah, there are different stories, which are pastimes that are mentioned in, in the Puranas. The Puranas are the ancient teachings uh, related to a particular akadasi, and that really mean, brings about how one should observe that particular type of akadasi. So Akadasi is very specific in terms of its observation, but Prabhupada didn't give us that because it was too complicated to follow. So he gave us the simple Akadasi like that. And he didn't like anybody sleeping during the day on Akadasi. He said if, you, if they're sleeping, give them something to eat. <laughs> he said this, he Prabhupada would get angry if he saw devotees sleeping on Akadasi, he said. He said, this is the day for less eating, more chanting, like that. Okay, so yes. Uh, uh, okay, I'm really good at names, let me think. All right, uh, Darya Chandrika, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, I have one practical question regarding Ekadashi, uh, because sometimes, it's not sometimes, but it happened that um, you invite your family on a lunch and it's Ekadashi and you know for example that they will not eat any other sweets than, than apple pie which is from grains so what is what to do in the in this situation is it principle of giving prasadam higher than getting just don't those? make any sweets <laughs> 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 oh I forgot to make the sweet I'm sorry come come back tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe you're going out and you have only cookies in your pocket and it's a Kaddishi day and you want to offer... We don't, we don't force those persons who don't practice spiritual life to follow the Akadasi. But we encourage them to. But if they, we, don't, we, don't make, we don't speak like we do in devotee circles. So sometimes when devotees also did programs on the Kaddishi for people in general... We sometimes would have grains there for the for the then the for the guests who would come like that, but devotees wouldn't need it. Though. So that's that's permissible, but that's concessionary also. <laughs> yeah. Does that help? Yes. Yes. Thank you. So you can make uh, apple pie from some from. Uh, what is that grain that's not a grain? From potato. <laughs> potato. <laughs> but, mother, I have a new kind of apple pie for you. I'm sure you'll like it. It's called potato apple. <laughs> it looks like a potato and tastes like an apple. <laughs> Something like that. You know, if you're good at coming up with stories, you can say anything. <laughs> Okay, anything else? Yes, in the back there. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. 
All right. Um, you next then. So we have to avoid only. Uh, I mean, uh, are there any other restrictions only in food on the Kadashia or maybe some other activities we have to avoid on this day? Well, one should not. Uh, for men, men shouldn't shave on this day. No shaving on this day. That means cutting the hair or shaving the face. Because if you cut yourself on this day, you break the Akadasi. That's why there's no shaving on Akadasi. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can't draw blood on this day. If, even if you're working outside and you, you, you cut yourself, that considers breaking Akadasi. Like that. So no hard work on this these days. And some people don't like hard work anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> work? What's that? <laughs> so yeah. So no hard work on this day. Usually we ask devotees to spend more time hearing and chanting. That's the essence of Akadas. Even if you can't chant mantras all day, it's a good time for reading. Like that, like that, and uh, what other things that we don't do on this day? Um, mm -hmm. we, we we refrain from all kinds of bodily activities. It's not a day to try to conceive a child either <laughs> on this day. So, yeah. God is he's very auspicious. It's extremely auspicious. If one, the more we, the stricter we follow it, the more the benefit is there. Um, mm -hmm. I, that's the only ones I can think of, at least. For the ladies, I don't think there's any kind of extra restriction like that. Of course, be careful not to cut yourself like that. Uh, well, this gentleman over here has a question, and then we'll go back to um, Sabina after that. Yeah. I'd like to ask uh, if there are what what are the benefits for people than uh, doing a kadash in un unknowingly that they don't know it's a kadash, but they don't eat grains or beans. Wow! And what is the, if there is benefit? What uh, about I the plants? Oh, I can tell you a story about that one. That's interesting. Pallad Maharaj, before he became Pallad Maharaj, I mean, he was a little bit licentious in his previous life. <laughs> and he was with a prostitute. And so he had a big fight with that prostitute. And it was a codicy. And so he got angry, and she got angry, and they both fasted that day. Because he fasted on that day, that Ikadasi, although he did it without knowing, he got the benefit of taking birth as Prahlad Maharaj in the next life. That's mentioned in the Shastras like that. Because it was also, it was also on the eve of the appearance of Lord, Shait Lord Nishringadev also like that. <laughs> and the plants? Like so if anybody follows it involuntarily, they're going to get some benefit, even if they don't know it. What benefit they get, that's up to Krishna. Krishna will decide what benefit to give them, but they will obviously get some benefit, some spiritual benefit. They may just happen to meet a devotee after that, and then their spiritual life begins. Mm -hmm. uh, Sabina is next, and then after that, uh, this gentleman over here, and then Shasha. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, I just wanted to ask uh, regarding the ladies and the Kadashi, I heard you're not supposed to wash your hair. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Save on shampoo. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, this way, this just gentleman sitting on the chair, way on the other side. Uh, 
I don't know if that washing the hair thing is anywhere in the Shastras, but I don't remember hearing about that. In other words, what you're saying and what people might be saying is reduce bodily activities on that, on that day. That's the basic principle. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, in lecture you mentioned that if we're offering the grains to the deities in that day, that's sinful. You Did become I, you become the killer of your spiritual master. That's what it says. <laughs> I mean, deities. Mm, then you become well. You can't get any worse than that. <laughs> because I'm a little bit confused. That uh, I often heard that. Oh no, you can offer no. You can offer gra grains to the deities on on this day. That's that fine. That doesn't influence on Supreme Lord. I mean. Because the Supreme Lord doesn't at all follow Ekadasi. We mentioned that. No, the, the Lord gets regular offerings on, on the Ekadasi. It's just for the jiva, the, the jiva soul, us. And even the spiritual masters who are great souls, they also follow the Ekadasi. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. And then we have Shasha. I have a question. Some, some people they say that uh, what about pregnant women? They can follow. They should follow a kadashi, or they are not obliged to follow if they are pregnant. Well, I don't want to say anything that might be incorrect, but. I don't see how that would hurt the child by not following, by not, yeah. Now, if, it, if they're under a doctor's care and they have to follow a particular diet according to the doctor's care, then they should get a letter from the doctor saying that this is required. <laughs> I'm sh why did you ask about pregnant women? <laughs> I asked because there are some devotees who are not women and they don't follow a Kadashi because they say they can. They can't. Um, oh, they can't. I won't mention names, but oh. they say they can't. So, I mean, if some ladies are pregnant and they can follow, sure they can. They are men, and nothing's <laughs> wrong, wrong with that. <laughs> well. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> you are a well-wisher of the, the devotees. So. Okay. <laughs> but the point is, uh, everybody can. <laughs> it's not hard. Prabhupada made it so easy. No grains and no beans. I mean, how easy can that, could that be? That's so easy. Now, if you're in India and you're a Bengali, <laughs> now there's a problem. <laughs> Bengalis really have a hard time with it. They follow it, but it's like they can't wait to that breakfast because <laughs> they love rice. <laughs> the worst thing you can do to a Bengali is don't give him rice. <laughs> but yeah, so the point is that it's not that hard. It sounds so simple. simple. I think getting up in the morning is harder than following a codicy sometimes. <laughs> For some devotees. <laughs> yeah, a codicy is really auspicious. And of course, if they don't follow, they get pretty heavy sinful reactions if they're in knowledge of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, Sabina. Microphone. I, I just want to uh, see if I understood correctly. Uh, you said when uh, we offer the grains to the Lord, uh, if it's done only for the deities on the altar, that's not uh, considered sinful, but if we offer it 
to the Lord and give it to Jiva, that is sinful and counted yeah. as... Uh, Prabhupada said, you, you, you keep uh, that prasadam to the next day and then it's uh -huh. distributed, yeah. Okay. How about in the case where you maybe offer happy cookies to non-devotees on Ekadashi, is that also considered this killing of the Guru? If they become happy by the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I would follow. I'm a little bit conservative. I would think I would not do anything with grains on that day. They say just to just to stay away from grains completely on that day, unless they're required to serve the deities. It's better to, to not even be around grains that day in any way. Okay, here comes another question I can't answer. <laughs> no question? Okay. All right, so... Uh, and so the temple decided not to cook anything today for... <laughs> but they have plenty of water, so... <laughs> and the, for those who didn't bring their beads, we have extra Japa beads. <laughs> No, I'm only joking, though. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Sri Akadasi Vrata Ki Jai. Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai.